The lesson from the Word today comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 21 through 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word today. So last Sunday we looked at Mark chapter 1 verses 14 through 20 and this notion of proclaiming news. We can either choose to proclaim good news or we can choose to proclaim bad news. But either way, we're going to be proclaiming some sort of news. And as people saved and called by Jesus, we are to resist the urge to proclaim bad news all the time and instead proclaim the good news. Because that is the kind of news that is going to make a real difference in our lives as well as the lives of others. And so this Sunday, we're going to move further into Mark chapter 1 up to verses 21 through 28. And it's here that the scene opens with Jesus taking his new disciples and heading to Capernaum. They head into the synagogue there so Jesus can teach. And he does that. And so incredible is the Lord's teaching that the people in there are said to have been amazed by what he had to say. And the reason is that they were used, they were used to the teachings of the teachers of the law. And, and there was a problem there. The teachers of the law were short-sighted. They were hung up on technicalities of the word and the law and the traditions. This is how we've always done it, they were basically saying. They rarely saw the heart within and behind the law. They were most concerned about their own authority rather than God's authority. Now notice what else happens here. There's a man there who we're told is possessed by an impure spirit. He's been hanging out in that congregation for some time. And, and the teachers of the law sure didn't notice this. So who knows how long he's been in there messing things up for this congregation. Well, the possessed man hears Jesus teaching and, and from within, within him, the spirit, the impure spirit cries out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus snaps back sternly, we're told. Be quiet. Come out of him. And just like that, at the command of Jesus, the impure spirit shook the man violently, and with a shriek he came out of him. Well, this caught everyone's attention in the synagogue that day. They were amazed, it says, by what they had just witnessed. They couldn't believe what they heard out of Jesus. What is this, they said? A new teaching and with authority. Why, well, he even gives, gives uh, orders to impure spirits and they obey him. And the word about him spread all over, we're told. So do you see what's happened here in this story? Jesus comes along and he presents something new to the people. Something that was completely new to them. Something completely different from what they were learning from the teachers of the law in there. Here was somebody who had amazing things to say about God and about his kingdom that was arriving. Here was somebody who had a new teaching that was hitting home for everybody and affected real life. Here was somebody who exhibited authority when he opened his mouth to teach. So much so that even evil spirits obeyed him. And in a world and in a time that, that had seemingly seen it all and heard it all, I think today we can still be amazed by this same Jesus who still has new things to teach us if we will listen and still holds authority if we will give him his rightful place in our lives. 
first thing we note in this passage is that the people were amazed. The people were amazed. I mean, they really and truly were amazed by what Jesus was saying to them. You know, when, you, when you've got God in the human flesh, you're, you're, you're going to hear things that are, that are going to sound like nothing you've ever heard before, right? These people were amazed by Him indeed. The things that he said, those, those parables, those powerful teaching stories that he preached with, those, those sermons, like the Sermon on the Mount. Go back and reread Matthew chapters 5 through 7 for that account. And the things that he did, the healings of the blind and the deaf and the mute and the lame, up to and including even resurrecting the dead, the, the calming of the storms. The feeding of thousands and thousands of people with nothing more than a few loaves and a couple of fishes. And as in the case in this passage, the driving out of evil spirits that held a man captive, Jesus was flat out amazing in this story, isn't he? And that same Jesus will amaze us today too if we will listen to him. And let him amaze us. And I think that involves some intentional time spent dwelling on him and his words and his deeds. And asking ourselves the questions of, what amazes me about Jesus? What do I find so amazing about him that it gets me talking to others about him? Let me ask you, what amazing thing has Jesus done for you? And when you think about what he has done, think about what he can do. What amazing thing do you need Jesus to do for you in your life? Next, we take note of what Jesus is saying to the people. It's called a new teaching. I believe that these people were not too different from the people of today. They had seen it all. They had heard it all. They'd been listening to these teachers of the law droning on for years and years and, and now felt no more encouraged, no more edified in their faith than when they had first started. They had so heard so many sermons about what to do and what not to do, right? And very little of what God had done and what God was doing. So imagine how new the Lord's teaching would have been to them that day that Jesus came and taught in the synagogue. In Luke's gospel, we're treated with what Jesus preached in the synagogue in, in, in Luke chapter 4. Th that time it was in Nazareth, but, but still it gives us a sense of what his teaching sounded like. In that account, Jesus grabbed the scroll of Isaiah and walked up front and began to read from Isaiah chapter 61 where it says this, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And when He finished, He rolled the scroll back up, He handed it to the attendant, and He sat down, and with everybody's eyes in that place glued upon Him, he declared, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Nobody said that in there, right, before. That is the kind of new teaching that Jesus taught those people with. And he, he has more to say to you and I today. More amazing things to teach us today, if we will listen and pay attention. And you know, for those of us who have heard it all, it may mean that we have to unlearn some things that we've learned so that we can learn some new things from Him. What are the old things that you've learned? Is, is it maybe that nothing's ever going to change? Is that what you've learned in the past? Is it that this is as good as it's ever going to get? Is that what you've learned? Is it that God doesn't seem to be present and at work today? Is that what you've been led to believe? 
And maybe we've simply forgotten some things that Jesus has taught us in the past. We've forgotten those lessons. We've forgotten the healings. We've forgotten the times that he walked with us and he taught us. Maybe before we can learn this new thing that he's taught us or is teaching us, we must remember what he's already taught us. So think back. What has Jesus taught you? And what do you need Jesus to teach you now? And thirdly, we see the difference in how Jesus taught those people in our passage. He did it with authority. In this scene, it's clear, isn't it? Jesus Christ is in command. Even the unclean spirits obey him. Jesus has authority over all, including even them. They knew right away, as soon as they saw him, as soon as he opened his mouth to speak, they knew who they were dealing with. They called him the Holy One of God, the Son of the Most High. The Word of God in the flesh was there. He was on the scene and it shook those impure spirits to the very core because they knew they could no longer reign in this poor man possessed. They, know that they knew they could no longer move freely at will in that congregation. Their time was up and they knew it. They were outmatched. That's why they said, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? Because you can. I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. The impure spirit knew who was in control. It knew, it had, it, it knew who had the power. It knew who had the upper hand. And so when the Lord told it to be quiet, it hushed its mouth. And the next time it opened its mouth was to scream in terror as Jesus sent it packing. That is what we call a display of authority, folks. And Jesus had that. He has the authority over everything that is good, yes. But he also has the authority over everything that is evil. And to a people that had inevitably seen so much evil, and probably just resigned themselves to believing that there's nothing that can be done about it. What Jesus did with his authority there was new and it was amazing. And so the question becomes, will you and I give Jesus the authority in our lives to do as he pleases, to say whatever we need to hear? What authority have you given Jesus in your life? What about those areas in our lives when it seems like we don't have any authority ourselves over them? What situation do you need to remind yourself that Jesus has control over? Will we give Jesus the authority to teach us all that he wants to teach us? Some things he wants to teach us are pretty easy to hear and to take to heart. You know, some of, the, some of my favorites are, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. That's pretty easy to hear, isn't it? But what about this one, another favorite? You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And what about this one? Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned, has crossed over from death to life. But some of his other teachings are hard to hear hard to accept, such as do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. And what about this one? Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And what about when he says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. And will we give him the authority to, to change us however he wishes or send us wherever he wishes or say to us whatever he has to say to us or, 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 or say whatever he wants us to say to others, right? Or do what he would have us to do. Will he... And as far as our faith goes, will we give him the authority in our faith to actually believe that he can cast out those demons in our lives? The authority to believe that he can do all things and nothing is too hard for him. That all things
things, as Jesus said, are possible with God. Here's what we are shown in this passage from Mark chapter 1. Jesus really is amazing. He teaches us new teachings. And he does it with authority. And he can do what we cannot. Utilizing some of these thinking points I mentioned earlier, I want to lead you all now in a prayer to help you claim today what is exhibited by Jesus in this passage, to claim for yourself and in your life what Jesus demonstrates in this passage. Because as the Word says to us in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He is ready to amaze us today with his new teachings by his own authority. Let us now go to him in prayer. Won't you pray with me, please? Holy One of God, we have heard your words. We've read of your deeds today in the Holy Scriptures. And today it is our hope that with your help we may take them to heart. We are a people who have seemingly seen it all and heard it all. We've seen things that cause us to take our gaze away from you. We've heard things that cause us to question the truths that you teach. Lord, as the father of the possessed boy in Mark chapter 9 shouted, I do believe. Help me in my unbelief. Open our physical eyes as well as the eyes of our hearts to be amazed by you again. Remind us of the ways you've revealed yourself to us in the past, refresh us on the things that have happened to us that never could have were it not for your presence and your power. In these quiet moments, let us dwell on all the amazing things about you and all the amazing things you did as recorded in the Holy Scriptures and all the amazing things you did for us in times past. And Lord, open our minds to receive your new teaching. As much as we've already learned in our lives, there's much more to be learned from you. May you help us to unlearn the lies we've accepted as truth. May you help us to be open to learn new things that may contradict what we've previously learned, but that you need us to learn. Remind us of what we've learned in days past. Remind us also that you have more to say and more to teach us even now, right now, in our day-to-day -day lives. In these quiet moments, speak to us, Lord. And tell us what new teachings we are to work on learning from you. And Lord, we have learned in this passage today that you alone hold all authority. Help us to relinquish whatever authority we think we hold in our lives to your authority. Remind us that you are above all and in all and working through all. That no matter how powerful evil seems to be, it cannot hold a candle to the power you have. That as out of control life may seem, and as in control evil may seem, you hold total and absolute authority over all. In these quiet moments, help us now to authorize you to do what you will in our lives, to have complete and total authority in them. And also in these quiet moments, may we list the things that we need you to have authority over in our personal situation.
now amaze us. From this moment on, in all your glory and power, every day amaze us. And starting from this very moment, teach us a new teaching, Lord. We are eager to learn from you, Lord Jesus. Teach us a new teaching that will transform us from the inside out. Transform our situations. Transform our very lives. And King of all kings, Lord of all lords, whose name is above all names, take authority. Take authority over us and our situations, our very lives. Drive the impure spirits out so that your Holy Spirit can dwell and amaze and teach unhindered. All this we pray in the name of the one who amazes and teaches us new things by his absolute authority, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 